I have seen recordings that Dr. Heiser did some years ago where he explains from his perspective the meaning of Genesis 1, 23, and he pointed out that this text does not support the gap theory. Does Ezekiel 28, 12 through 17 and Isaiah 14, 12 through 15 really back up the claim that the being commonly referred to as Satan sinned prior to the creation of Adam and Eve? Uh, short answer is no, no, neither of those passages do that at all. Uh, the, the point with Genesis 1, 1 to 3, I should throw this in for people who have not seen that video. Again, that's something you can find if you go up to the website, put in that verse reference and put in gap theory and you'll find the, the video that's referred to here. Genesis 1, 1 to 3 in terms of Hebrew syntax is not a linear chronology. The first creative act, again, by rule of Hebrew syntax is in verse 3. God said, let there be light, and there was light. It's not actually in 1-1. And if you observe the Hebrew syntax, it's either going to have verse 2 as a parenthetical thought or verse 1 as a title, some sort of, uh, I guess that's the best way to say it, some sort of a disconnected title from it. Then that opens the door to, again, long eons of time before you even ever get to the first creative act when matter pre-exists and the, 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 the days of creation are about God's refashioning that material. Now, the gap theory argues some of that, but it tries to put a gap of time between verses one and verse between verse one and verse two. Again, you, you can't do that syntactically because it's not a linear sequence. So that's the first problem. But going to Ezekiel 28 and Isaiah 14, here's, here's the problem there. Neither Ezekiel 28 nor Isaiah 14 give you a chronology of events in Eden. There is no chronology in these passages. Neither has any basis, therefore, for timing the fall given us a time of the fall in relation to Adam and Eve and the, and, and the divine rebel in Eden. We, we, do, we don't get a chronology. And there's no basis for using those passages as some sort of chronology when they don't give you a chronology. So consequently, neither really offers any support for a gap theory, and neither does Genesis 3, by the way. Second thing I would say, again, just for, for listeners' sake, I think the questioner probably knows this, but uh, the divine rebel of Eden is never called Satan in the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. So again, the wording of the question itself, you know, might feel inaccurate to some listeners again, but I think the questioner probably knows this anyway, but for the sake of convenience, this is the wording, you know, that we're getting. Uh, the Hebrew word Satan is not a proper personal noun uh, in, in the Hebrew Bible, in the Old Testament. That's by rule of Hebrew grammar. Hebrew grammar does not put a definite article before a proper personal noun. Neither does English. Okay. I'm not the Mike. A okay, tray is not the tray. Okay, that makes no well, sense Mike, at all Mike, in English. Mike, I beg to differ there. <laughs> I beg to differ there, Mike. Uh, I, I, yeah, you and Donald Trump, right? The Donald, okay? This is not the way English normally <laughs> works, other than with huge egos, I guess. <laughs> but English does not prefix the definite article to a proper personal name, and, and neither does Hebrew. So in Job 1 and 2, in Zechariah 3, every occurrence of Satan in those passages has a definite article. That tells you immediately if you care about Hebrew grammar, and hey, isn't that what the Old Testament's inspired in? That tells you right away that we do not have a proper personal name. So Satan, capital S Satan, as in the divine rebel of Genesis 3, is not in Job 1 and 2. It's not, he's not in Zechariah 3 either. Uh, the, the, there is no instance where Satan is used as a, as a proper name for you know, any entity in the Old Testament. Now, when it lacks the article, Unfortunately, you don't get any help there either. When it lacks the article in the Hebrew Bible, there's no evil divine being referred to as Satan without the article. There is a good one, the angel of the Lord, Numbers 22. He's, he's referred to as Satan without the article. So there you have a divine name and a title and whatnot, but it's a good guy. So, you know, again, I don't want to go too far afield on this, but there's a certain disconnect in the popular thinking about Satan and Genesis 3, and Isaiah 14, Ezekiel 20. I, I go into all this stuff in, in, in Unseen Realm, but a lot of it exists on the website. Go up to drmsh.com, put in Satan, and you're going to find a video of me, you know, doing a search in the Hebrew Bible and showing you these things I just summarized. Uh, it's, not, it's not thrilling, but it makes the point. Now, lest people be troubled, you know, by listening to this, the divine rebel of Genesis 3, of course, the Nakash, that, that's the name he is called you know, serpent or, you know, shining one or, you know, something like that. The, 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 the diviner, again, the one who's deceiving, whatnot, trying to dispense divine revelation when he shouldn't be. Again, that being Nakash in uh, Genesis 3 eventually is referred to as Satan in later literature. 
in intertestamental literature, what we properly would call the Second Temple Period literature, and of course in the New Testament. So there Satan becomes a proper personal noun. Okay, by that time, it had been used as a proper name. And, you know, it fits. Satan means adversary, and that's what the rebel in Genesis 3 was doing. He was opposing. He was taking on an adversarial role uh, to what God wanted to do in Eden. So it, it fits. It, it just so happens that in the Old Testament, that word isn't used as, as a name you know, for that, that particular being. So, again, this, this, is just, it's just, this is just what the text is. I mean, I'm not, I'm not uh, looking at any other information. This is the phenomena of the text. And the Bible was inspired. The Old Testament's inspired in Hebrew. New Testament, Greek, you know, whatnot, uh, some Aramaic, of course, in Hebrew, but this is just the way it is. If, if you're going to, you know, note inspiration here, then this is what you got. I, I think the, the question is a bit of importance because the enemy, you know, of God, we know as Satan, again, because we use the New Testament, obviously. That enemy, again, is the rebel of Eden because the New Testament makes the identification, even if the Old Testament doesn't. Uh, he gets cast down to earth which is, is Eretz in Hebrew, which also is the word, one of the words for underworld, the realm of the dead. And that's significant because the, the being that's cast down in rebellion, if we look at the New Testament, that being has no authority over believers. And frankly, when he's cast down to the earth or the underworld, he has no authority in the divine council from that point on. I mean, people know my view is that the Nakash, the divine rebel of Genesis 3, was a divine council member. Again, get the unseen realm, you'll, you'll read all about that. Uh, he has no no authority in the council from that point on because he is in rebellion and it has been punished. Now, when you get to the New Testament, Luke ten eighteen, we read, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Jesus says that. Uh, Jesus utters that as he begins his public ministry about the kingdom of God. And so what's the point? Well, up until that point, the Satan was an accuser of God's people. The, he had authority over all humans after the fall because all humans are no longer born in Eden. There is no Eden. It's gone. People are born alienated from God just by virtue of Eden not being here and also because of their sin, because they sin. They're born separated from God's presence. And so when Jesus turns around and says in Luke ten eighteen, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, it's a significant statement. And he is referring to this being, you know, back in Genesis 3, again, even though the, the Hebrew Bible doesn't use that term, for that being, uses Nakash and other terms, Jesus is looking back there and saying, look, I'm announcing the kingdom of God. He sends out the 70, or the 72, depending if you're reading the Masoretic text or the Septuagint, which again, in the divine council worldview is really significant. Jesus is saying, hey, I'm here, and now it's time to reclaim the nations. We're going to kickstart the kingdom of God right here. And as soon as he sends them out and they return and say, wow, you know, we've got authority over demons and all this great stuff. He says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven, meaning Satan has no legal claim as the Lord of the dead over a citizen of the kingdom of God. They will never die. Now, they'll die physically, but they will live forever. Their sin has been taken care of. They are reconciled to God. You know, all this New Testament language we refer to. Jesus, again, right when the, when the whole program starts, he announces this being who caused all this trouble has no claim on your soul if you embrace who I am and become a citizen of the kingdom of God. Again, so I'm, I'm not denying anything of importance of, of biblical theology. I mean, you just heard really good bib biblical theology there. All I had to do was quote some verses. What I'm saying in the matter of Satan is you need to be a little more careful with our terminology, and we don't need to import him into, gen you know, in, into certain passages to make certain theories stand up. Okay, there is no chronology in Isaiah 14 and in Ezekiel 28 uh, for a gap, okay, for when you know, th this rebellion occurred and, and all that sort of stuff. You can't build a gap theory on any of these passages, especially, you know, going back to Genesis 1, 1 through 3, which is not a chronology. So again, that, that got a little convoluted, but I think, again, there's just some important things that people should be aware of because you're going you're gonna to run across it on the internet. You're going to run across it on somebody who's hostile to the faith and pointing this out. And you might find it's true. And then, oh, you know, my faith's going to crumble now because Satan wasn't a proper personal name in the Hebrew Bible. Well, so what? Okay. It's just grammar. We're talking about the theology here. The theology, you know, is, is what's important here.